So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through painting this painting right here, which deals a lot with water, shadows, dappled light. It's a lot of fun, so let's get to it. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. Okay, so if you wanna see the full version of this painting video tutorial, you can find that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you're struggling with knowing what kind of materials to buy, like paints, brushes, canvas, stuff like that, I put Amazon links in the descriptions of all my videos to the supplies I suggest for beginners. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. All right, that's enough promotion, let's get to to the tutorial. All right, I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about my materials. I am painting on a oil primed uh, linen panel. It's a Centurion oil primed linen panel. I am using an assortment of colors from Gamblin and Windsor and Newton. And no, I'm not sponsored by any companies. They're not paying me to say any of this. I don't get a cut of anything that they sell or whatever. This is just the materials that I like. Then the colors I am using today are ultramarine blue, Elysian crimson, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cadmium lemon, and titanium white. And I'm actually not using any medium in this painting. I'm just gonna be using my paint thinner. All right, now the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this white canvas. So I'm gonna put on a wash of burnt sienna. Now you've probably seen this done before. You've probably seen it done with like transparent red oxide. I've done it with portraits with yellow ochre and uh, black, you know, but there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. There isn't one specific color you need to use. I particularly just like burnt sienna because it's a warm color. Uh, if it shows through in like a landscape, it adds warmth to the landscape. So as the wash that we just laid down is setting up and drying, we can take this time to draw in our composition. And now this is going to be done very loosely. I'm just going to use a little more burnt sienna uh, just to paint in loosely where things are. This painting doesn't have, you know, a ton of uh, objects or structures in it. You know, I'm just going to block out basically where this tree is, where the shadows are, the shoreline, uh, just make some distinct uh, marks where certain things should be. And that's it. I'm not worried about getting a detailed drawing. I'm worried about getting an accurate drawing. I'm worried about the placement of certain things. I'm worrying about the composition. For example, this shoreline, I don't want to have it run off directly out into the corner of the canvas. I want it off to the side or straight down to the bottom. You never want a line going directly down into the corner of the canvas. So I'm just thinking about things like that. I'm, I'm thinking about spacing. I'm thinking about, you know, the big shapes and how everything is working. I'm just roughly blocking it in. So I like to work dark to light, which means I like to lay in my darker tones first and then build my lights on top of that. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm keeping things very simple here. Like I don't care if different objects are pushed together into one shape. Like here, I'm, I'm blocking out the trees and the shadows of the trees and the water and everything, leaves, branches. I'm just making that all one color, all one shape, all one value. I'm not worrying about the detail right now. I'm blocking in with dark paint. And since this paint is thin, I'm gonna be able to build over top of it with the lighter paint. So I'm doing the same thing here with the sand on the shoreline. I'm mixing up a dark purple with ultramarine blue, Elysian crimson, titanium white, and I'm using yellow ochre to desaturate it. Now there is a bunch of dappled light all over this sand, but I'm not worrying about that right now. I'm using thin dark paint and I know I'll be able to go over top of it with lighter paint and paint in those light spots later. So for right now, I just want to lay in my dark, just get the big shape, the big color, the big value. So when it comes to painting dappled light like I'm gonna be doing here on the shoreline, there's a few things that you should be aware of. One is that you don't wanna make these spots too bright. I'm actually taking the color that I used for the shadow part of the sand and I'm lighting it with titanium white. I'm adding a little bit more red to it to make it a little bit warmer. So it's gonna be kind of like a pinkish purplish color. And I'm gonna lay that in first because with these circles of dappled light, the center of those circles is actually gonna be brighter and warmer than the outside. And the actually outside edges where the, the light meets the shadow, those are gonna be very soft edges. It's very key that you have these soft edges because if you think about it, these shadows from this dappled light are coming from the sun shining through the trees and the branches and the leaves and those branches and leaves are moving. It's get, The sun's getting through uh, different amounts and different spots. So the shadows it's creating on the sand are not very harsh shadows, they're moving shadows. And softening the edges on the light spots on this sand is gonna give it that nice dappled shadowed light effect. 
Now this idea of soft edges goes for the water as well. You got all these different shadows in the water and it's gonna be even more important because water is so fluid and it's actually really good to work wet into wet when you're working with water. So if you're painting a subject with water, I highly recommend painting all of the water at one time. You know, don't let it dry or tack up or you know, try and come back to it another day to get that good effect of you know fluidness in the water especially if you have like a lot of shadows or dappled light in the water you're going to want to really soften your edges and you're going to want the different colors to you know bleed together and just give this very fluid look so that's what i do here in the water all right so now i'm going to move to the leaves on the tree and i'm going to start by putting in the leaves that are underneath in shadow first and then the ones that are in highlight on the top now don't get bogged down in trying to paint every single little leaf. Try and group the leaves into different clumps and make sure these clumps are all different in size and shape. You don't wanna have a bunch of the same size and shape repeating clumps of leaves in your trees. It's just not gonna look natural. So try and, you know, break down the leaves into sections and paint those as simply as possible. But then you can go back later with a smaller brush and put little accent leaves around these big clumps of leaves. Also, don't forget about negative space to construct and carve out your leaves here. Here I use the water that's behind the trees to cut back in holes in the leaves, to you know cut the edges to make it how I want it to be. So since there is sunlight coming down above this tree through the leaves, some of that light is gonna hit these tree branches. So I wanna mix up a light color to indicate highlights on tree branches just to give the branches some more structure. Now you don't have to go exactly by the picture on this and I recommend you actually don't uh, put these highlights where you need them to translate and to identify the tree branches where you want so I mix up some burnt sienna with some titanium white and Elysian crimson and I make sure the paint is thick so I can lay it on nicely I can put it on with one stroke and just leave it and I'm gonna go through my tree here and just indicate little highlight spots on branches that I want so to indicate some waves, some little ripples in this water, I'm gonna mix up a really uh, bright blue, which is actually the blue that's being reflected from the sky above. So I'm just getting some uh, titanium white and ultramarine blue and mixing up a light blue and making some horizontal strokes. Again, making sure to vary them. I don't want all these strokes to be the same width, the same length, the same spacing apart. You know, keep this varied. Remember, any repetition of objects uh, in your painting, you wanna vary those up as much as possible. So I'm going to lay these in in certain areas to give it the effect of that rippling waves in the water. Now looking at the shadows in the water from the trees, I noticed that there was a lot of green reflected in the water from the leaves. So I go back in with a dark green. I make sure I don't want to get this too bright. I still want these greens that I'm putting in to operate within the shadow value uh, of this tree in the water. So I'm going to put in these greens and you can see how we are building the effect of this water kind of one effect at a time. You know, first we blocked out just where the shadows would be in the water. And then we made sure to soften the edges between shadows and highlights in the water to give it a smooth, fluid look. Then we went in with the reflected light from the sky to indicate these waves. Now we're putting in touches of green for the reflected leaves and the water. So just think about this next time you paint water and you got all these effects going, just take it one effect at a time. Start big, work to small. You know, Start with the big shapes, the big ideas, the big values, and slowly work to more and more detailed. And before you know it, all these effects will build up on top of each other and you'll have some great looking water. Now, if you look closely, a lot of these branches are catching a lot of reflected warm light from the water underneath. So I'm gonna mix up a warm, uh, almost like an orange to put in on these branches on the underside to indicate that warm reflected light. Being able to identify you know, warm reflected light and shadows is really hard to do from photographs. This is why I highly recommend if you can to get out and work in plain air, work, you know, paint, paint from life. It's going to help you see things that you can't really get from photo references. And it's just going to give you a greater understanding of just how light works outside in a landscape. Now, painting in plain air, in my opinion, is the hardest type of painting that there is. So if you go do this, don't be hard on yourself. You know, it's going to be tough, but you will get so much out of it, I promise. All right, now it is time for the focal point of the painting, which is this bird. And I'm going to paint it in first with just a very light purple just to block it in and get it drawn in correctly. And then I'm going to mix up a highlight and I'm not going to pure white. I am mixing a little bit of yellow in here and I'm going to lay in this thick highlight and the key 
with painting something like this, something small like this that is, you know, the focal point that needs to be, you know, strongly painted is to try the best you can to lay down some paint and leave it, you know, make a mark and just let it there. You know, think about your mark before you make it. Think about how you're gonna go in, what brush you're using. You know, make sure the paint is thick uh, and it's gonna do what you want, but try the best you can not to fuss with it, you know, at all. Now, just like the tree branches that we painted, there is this warm, uh, peachy, reflected light coming up on the belly of the bird, and I wanna make sure I get that in too. Now, while you're painting, if you do mess up the shape of the bird, you can always reshape it with the surrounding color, which is what I had to do here. All right, so I'm just gonna put a beak on this bird, and now we have a finished painting. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little painting walkthrough. Again, if you wanna see the full version of this painting tutorial, it is on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Uh, if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at fours of 43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.